Hello, welcome. Today we are talking about how to get over a friend breakup, a topic that is near and dear to my heart because I have been going through this process myself and I decided to outline this video to help you in case you are going through the same thing. It's quite sad as any ending is and it's quite painful. There's loads of feelings. There always are with me. A painful process of healing and letting go and let's go through how you can do that gracefully. First thing is do not blame yourself. Anyone who is prone to self-criticism, to having like a loud negative voice in your head, which I think is a lot of us, you are probably going over this, whether you had a big falling out with this friend, which is what happened with me. <laughs> so there's like a definite ending or you faded, drifted apart, moved away, whatever. You might be thinking there are things that you could have done differently. And I think some of that reflection can be helpful, but if you start like blaming yourself, or like just talking badly to yourself, saying things like, yeah, no wonder they don't want to be friends with me anymore. Or like, I ruin everything. Like these are very big dramatic thoughts. They're not helpful. And you're just beating yourself up when you're already in a sad situation. Like it's very normal for you to be sad that this has happened and you've lost this friend. You don't need to be adding to that and making yourself feel any worse. Sometimes things just don't work out. Yeah, you can maybe reflect back on it and you can be like, oh, if I did this different, if I said this different, but there's still two of you. And if that person didn't want to be friends or they did something that was so awful or they weren't there for you, it's not all on you. And you know, there's like cringy sayings, things like sometimes people are in your life for a reason or sometimes people are only in your life for a season. You know, so maybe this friendship served you as well as it could. And in the grand scheme of your life, which you don't have the whole perspective of, maybe actually this was what was supposed to happen. But it it's not a reflection on you. So the first thing is to not blame yourself. I think practically something that's quite helpful is to go no contact. I know people talk about that a lot for romantic relationships that end. Yeah, I've definitely found it helpful in both contexts, both with friendships ending and with romantic relationships. It's quite brutal because I'm thinking with this specific friend, I was used to speaking to this person every day. So it's quite brutal then to go no contact because you're like, I was so used to hearing from this person or like they were always there and now they're not anymore. And it's difficult, but ripping off the band-aid, <laughs> ripping off the plaster, it's gonna hurt, but long-term maybe that's the best thing for you. So you could consider doing that. It depends on the circumstances. Again, maybe you are already inadvertently no contact because you've drifted apart from this person. If it was something, you know, something happened or like even if they were the one to say, we can't be friends anymore or whatever the context, it can be a helpful thing. Not only does this mean like don't call them, don't message them, but like stop stalking them, stop looking at their Instagram stories, any kind of like social channel, don't get involved. A lot of these platforms have ways that you can block people without actually blocking them. So you can like mute their stories so they won't even no, explore that. The next thing would be to trust your intuition. Treating this like a breakup and doing the no contact thing, you might be tempted to like get back in contact with this person because you have your rose tinted glasses on and you're like, oh my gosh, but I miss them, which is completely understandable. If this person was a big part of your life, of course you're going to miss them. But just because you do have good memories or you were good friends at one point, that doesn't negate what happened at the end or the reason why either they or you decided you couldn't be friends anymore that has not changed just because one of you or because you watching this are thinking oh no you know i wish i could be friends with them trust your gut trust your intuition i actually did let this friend back into my life because i felt bad and i didn't listen to my gut which was saying hmm, maybe leave this alone i hadn't spoken to her for months at that point and again this was someone i was speaking to every day not spoken for like four months and she got back in touch part of me didn't want to reply but the other part of me was interested to reply and see what she said but you know ultimately i should not have done that <laughs> i should have listened to that part of myself i should have trusted my intuition and paid more attention because i was right to let things go initially but we live and we learn and when you're in that situation sometimes you can't make the right decision and maybe it was the right decision for me to get back in contact with her so that then my initial decision could have been confirmed of like oh yeah no we're not going to be friends and now there is no doubt in my mind whereas before i was a bit like oh am i doing the right thing whereas now i know i'm doing the right thing <laughs> Every situation is different, but if possible, while you are gonna look back fondly, trust the reason why things ended, like trust your intuition. People talk about in friendships, like matching someone else's energy. And I myself have talked about this and have sort of complicated feelings about <laughs> like with everything, I just think about everything too much. I would say do not match someone else's energy if they don't wanna be friends with you. So with this friend, I used, like I said, we used to be really close and she then wanted to be friends but like sort of at a distance and to me i was like that's not gonna work because i'm not used to that like i'm used to either talking to you 
very frequently or not at all what's the thing of like don't take people's scraps like whatever they're offering you don't be like yes i'll take this because they're offering this to me be like is this what i want from this friendship or from even this relationship is this what i want no okay then no thank you like thank you but no thank you don't try and match their energy if you're not feeling it if they're like oh yeah let's meet up twice a year and you're like oh but I, i'm used to seeing you every week obviously in some situations that's gonna happen and that's gonna happen as you grow up you're used to seeing people every day at school and then you don't see them for like months at a time this happens but i'm talking about like a specific situation <laughs> don't match people's energy save your energy instead and instead of giving those scraps or like trying to put the same amount of effort that they're putting in just don't bother about any of that and save your energy to actually invest all of it into the relationships that matter to you into the people who already have confirmed that they do want to still know you and they do want to be friends with you or they do like knowing you, your relationship with your sibling or with your parents or with your cousins your grandparents like the people who you know or your good friends from school like whoever it is if you know these people already love and care about you forget about this random friend who you wish would like show up better or you wish hadn't said that thing or you wish was a best friend in whatever regard forget about that person and like the scraps they may be offering you don't try and match their energy of like weird distance or like too much distance don't have that that, like weird friendship if that's not what you want don't match that energy just be like okay i will just go and completely take my energy elsewhere then i don't need to like remain involved in this weird friendship and try and make this work if it's not going to another great thing to do in terms of this healing and letting go process is to journal and i talk about this a lot on my channel because it's such an effective way of dealing with things this is a particularly fraught situation like a friendship breakup there's going to be a lot of emotions a lot of memories it's normal for that to be sad and for you to feel sad or for you to doubt and be like am i doing the right thing or am i being mean some of those questions and doubts are completely normal and expected but you don't need to like bring those to the person or you don't need to like lash out at the person again depending on the situation because sometimes we do need to stand up for ourselves maybe this is something that you have to learn by doing that and then realizing like oh i i didn't need to be so direct or like stand up for myself so much i could have just let this fizzle out but i do think there is value in telling people especially if you know you're not going to remain friends with this person and just being like hey just a heads up like that was really hurtful i expected you to be a better friend there maybe they'll just like take offense at that but maybe they'll initially be offended but come back to it and be like yeah actually you know what i could have showed up better there we don't know we can't control what other people do but at least you can say it and people might be in the mood to be receptive to that it's difficult because sometimes people do view these things as like a personal attack i didn't know that i am so direct but i keep getting weird feedback from people not like direct feedback but you know just like the odd comment here and there where i'm like oh maybe i'm more direct than i realize i don't know i think it's a good thing but some people if you get someone's ego up then they're not going to be listening to anything so it's like no i'm not saying that you're a bad person i'm just talking about the behavior you're doing and it's affecting me in this way i try not to approach things being like you did this you did this i can't believe you did this more so being like I feel this, I am this. If I am gonna talk about something someone did, I make it very clear I'm talking about that specific thing that they did and not the person themselves. But some people can't get that. All that to say, sometimes you can approach people and be like, hey, we're not gonna be friends anymore and I respect your decision or I respect that this is the way it's happening but I just wanted to say all of this happened or this is the way I feel, thank you, goodbye, right? Sometimes you can be direct like that and express yourself and try and like give yourself some closure in that moment but otherwise you can journal and write about all this stuff so there are multiple ways you could do this you could do free writing and just write about the situation in detail you could write a letter to your past self and be like hey watch out <laughs> it's okay to like express every feeling i wrote yesterday a poem that kind of worried me because it was quite mean i was like well there is obviously this part of me that's still very annoyed at this friend about the way that they treated me and is very hurt so this poem is all about how I hope bad things happen to them. And part of me is like, is this really awful to write? But the other part of me, which I round off the poem by saying is like, it's not really about, I wish all this bad stuff happened to me. It's more that I am so hurt by what they did. I'm having to express myself this way, but really I just wish they hadn't hurt me. So sometimes I think we can be scared of these bad feelings, whether it's jealousy or feeling like really resentful or angry. That can be quite intimidating. I mean, anger for me, 
it's not intimidating at all it's probably like one of the most common emotions i feel because it's a masking emotion underneath the anger is normally fear so i feel anger all the time but for other people maybe you are scared of being angry but like giving yourself space either to write a poem or write a letter and express all of the feelings that you have about this relationship ending or the way this person treated you or even not the bad emotions but like the way you wish things were and like a wistful hopeful or nostalgic piece of writing anything like that that will be really cathartic for you journaling doing some kind of writing about this is really going to help you heal process things let things go write a really angry letter to them that you would never send something that you can fill with like swear words <laughs> and be like i can't believe you do this and i talked about earlier i wouldn't approach someone and be like you did this i can't believe you did this this hurt me you you're so awful blah blah, blah. put all of that in your letter that you're never going to send you don't have to say it to them you don't have to send it to them you don't even have to print it out you can literally just write it out and delete it or write it out on a piece of paper and rip it up the point isn't then to have something that you've written in this specific instance the point isn't for that thing to exist the point is in the writing of it whereas like a poem maybe that i'm gonna keep that poem it's like a lesson then if i decide to keep it i can read it and be like oh it is okay for me to express these bad feelings it doesn't mean that i'm a bad person i have already worked out through writing it oh it's, i don't hope that this all this terrible stuff happens to them i really hope that they're fine but I just wish that things hadn't happened in the way that they happened. I wish they hadn't hurt me. If you can journal about your experience, it may give you some catharsis. Another helpful thing to write about, this is helpful in like romantic breakups as well. Write a list of like all of the things that you don't like about them not in a mean way maybe this person is on their phone a lot and you're trying to talk to them and they're just on their phone and you're like could you not or maybe they're always late they're always like 10 minutes late reliably 10 minutes late and you're like that's just annoying i wish that this person was a better friend or maybe like you call them and they don't pick up or maybe they take like days to respond write that on the list just write a list of behaviors that you're like actually this is annoying and then write a separate list of like specific instances. They said they were going to come to my birthday party and then they cancelled because they said for whatever reason and then I saw actually they were like shopping with their other friends. A specific instance and write a list of those specific instances. We went out for lunch and they were really dismissive when I tried to bring up this topic. They said this really hurtful comment which they didn't seem to realise in the moment was hurtful. This will help with the rose tinted glasses from earlier. <laughs> if you do start to like miss them which is completely normal then you can look at the list and be like yeah okay I missed that time where we had a great holiday together or I missed that time where I went over for dinner or we went out to the zoo or we went to see this film and it was like really interesting you could miss all of these things about being friends with this person but having those two lists that we talked about means that yes you'll be like oh I miss them but you can also look at the list and be like oh, okay yes I have some good memories with this person but they weren't a perfect friend nor am I a perfect friend like you're, you're not perfect either the point isn't to be like look at all of these things they did wrong it's just to remind yourself that the rose tinted memories that you have are just that they are not telling the whole story you're only seeing one perspective as I said with like it's okay if you feel all these bad scary emotions it's also okay if things take time and all especially if things take longer than you realize if it takes shorter than you think that's great but like if you expect to get over this or to like stop missing this person within a few weeks and after a few months you're like why do I still miss them? Like, is there something wrong with me? Am I like a loser because I still miss this person? No, whatever process it ends up being for you is the right one. It is just gonna be that. And some days you'll think like, oh, I don't even miss them. And other days you'll be like, I'm really sad that I'm not friends with this person anymore. But there will come a time, whether that's tomorrow or a week from now or a few months from now, there will be a point where you don't even think about them and for whatever reason you're reminded of them and you're like oh oh my gosh it's been like weeks since i thought about this person hold on to that as well because you don't know how long it's going to take but it will eventually end you may still like hold on to a part of that like you may still have the memories of being with this person and being like oh yes for that nice holiday we had or you know we went out for lunch all together you will like learn to live without them and also linked to that is that you will make new friends i've been reading this book blueberries by Eleanor Savage. It's a book of essays <laughs> and the most recent chapter that I read, she's like quoting a statistic about like how 90% of human endeavors fail. And she's like, that's I think a conservative estimate. It's very normal for like people to come and go. Yes, this might be something that you have to heal from more if it's like a definite breakup, like a definite ending, either they did something or they said something, or you know, if this is like a, a a real end point as opposed to what most friendships happen is like you drift apart so it may be more difficult in that respect but like it's also very normal not to be like bleak but that 90 percent thing you know that's conservative it's a lot higher most things don't work out but you will find new friends whether that's someone who you're only friends with for like six months before they move away maybe this is just like the nature of making friends in your 20s there's always things changing and you're, you're just like okay i will just enjoy 
this moment like yeah we're going for a picnic great i'm just enjoying the picnic like i'm not thinking about like oh when when am i next seeing this person because like they could move away or you could stop being friends and in the meantime you can like lean into the friendships you have or if this person was a huge part of your life lean into your other relationships like like i said earlier with your sibling or with your cousins with your parents like reconnect with people try and meet new people maybe go say hi to your neighbors you know join a thing that you see people at every week and so people will get to know you because you go every week join a running club or a walking club a reading club anything where you'll be going regularly there's like an activity you can do there so it's not like everyone's just standing around being awkward it's like no we're here to run or we're here to talk about this book and you're probably not going to be friends with everyone but you may find one or two people there who you really get on with and if you're showing up week after week you will more than likely find someone leaving you with some hope that things will things will definitely get better it's just a process and i mean if you're watching a video like this i think that's a really good sign because you're recognizing like the emotional impact that this had on you and you're wanting to learn how to heal or how to like process this this friendship breakup how to move on from it so well done for that <laughs> that's that's a good sign already so you are doing okay i will leave a video on the screen if you want to watch that trust that you made the right decision and that the right things will happen <laughs> God bless. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. <laughs>